Wow, it sure is a good old ordinary day. I better check how my mobile games video was doing. Hey guys, welcome back to Mobile Games 2 Electric Boogaloo. I'm doing another one because I have a strange feeling that people kind of like the first one. Today, once again, I'm going to be taking a look at some more apps that you may have forgotten about. This time, ones I didn't cover originally or ones that I totally forgot about. Look, apps back then were weird, okay? And our standards were very, very low. <laughs> And I played so many of these things that I was bound to leave some out. And while I know calling them old is a bit of a stretch, I'm more talking about that time when the best you could afford was the light version of Minecraft Pocket Edition. You know what I'm talking about. I found a lot of weird apps when scrolling through my old downloaded ones when looking for some more to use for this video. Like this one called Doodle Buddy that has a chalk outline of a corpse as one of its default backgrounds. Maybe not that one then. I'm gonna use the random spinner again since that worked so well last time, but I can only track down about 10 or so games to talk about this time round because I covered basically all of my favorite ones in the last video. So without further ado... Hell yes, great one to start with. Did you ever play Temple Run and think, man, this game is great and all, but it's just missing something. I just wish I could play as Bear Grylls. Well, if you meet those very oddly specific requirements, then boy, do I have the game for you. Bear Grylls Survival Run. Yes, this exists. I'm gonna assume you're gonna pause the video now to go download it, so I'll give you a minute. Okay, done. Survival Run has pretty much the same gameplay as Temple Run, but does have a few different mechanics thrown in there, which I guess is what makes it stand out from the other billions of Temple Run clones. You know, other than the fact that you play as bear fucking grills. These include segments where you swim across a lake surrounded by the entirety of the bear population trying to eat you for bringing shame to their species name, sliding down a trail clearly marked as unsafe, but we all know that Bear Grylls doesn't play by the rules, and falling off a cliff without a parachute that suddenly appears before you land. Bear, where are you going? Instead of being chased by demon monkeys, you are instead pursued by a comparatively tamer bear, which I imagine is not that far off from what Bear Grylls actually gets up to in his shows. Also, if you do well enough, you get a compliment from Bear himself. Good work. <laughs> oh, stop it, you. But that's not even to mention all of the weird-ass outfits you can get at the game shop, like Desert Grylls, Swamp Grylls, Military Grylls, Agent Grylls, Bear Bear Grylls, yep, they had fun with that one, and Santa Grylls. Casual reminder that this is a product that Bear himself approved. To be honest, it's actually pretty easy to unlock them, so long as you find these during your runs instead of relying on collecting coins. Never thought I'd be giving Bear Grylls Survivor on a compliment, but here we are, I guess. The way I always tried to play it, though, was just to swipe down constantly and have him slide throughout the entire run, for no reason other than because I thought it was funny. It's the little things, you know? All right, here we go. Bear Bear Grylls. Wait, what are you doing? Uh, I'm one of you! Stop! Stop! Crossy Road is a cute little game where you play as an animal of your choosing and attempt to make your way past. No! This one is a little bit newer as opposed to the others in this video, but it was always a reliable game that I could bust out whenever I was waiting for a bus or trying to avoid talking to people at a party because social interaction is scary and playing as a chicken is not. The game's biggest fault comes in the form of the coins you need to collect in order to operate a machine that randomly selects a new character. And, get this, sometimes it can be a duplicate. In a in a virtual machine. Nothing is quite as frustrating as spending all that time getting a hundred coins only to unlock the goddamn Santa chicken again. This is the only way to get characters. You can't just buy them with the coins because, you know, that'd make sense. To Crossy Road's credit, there are so many characters. Like, so many. And some of them even change up the appearance of the gameplay. Like the Pac-Man one that gives the game the look of the maze, which is actually super cute. But pfft, we don't need all those characters. Back in my day, we could only play as a frog and we were fine with it. I do want to point out that each of these skins will cost you a dollar if you can't be stuffed waiting to unlock them. Of real money. One dollar to play as a chicken in a dinosaur costume. So, you know, of course I bought it. But the game is still obsessed with trying to get you to buy these things and will hound you at any given opportunity. Huh, suddenly I don't feel so bad about drowning the chicken. Uh-oh. I didn't want to talk about Angry Birds Classic in either of these videos because absolutely no one has forgotten about those little shits and their incredibly catchy theme song. It's been stuck in my head for 10 years, please help. But what I bet you did forget are any of the 500 million Angry Birds spin-offs. See, in the peak of its popularity, Rovio, the company behind the series, was pumping out like five of these games a year. Angry Birds dipped its claws into basically every genre you can think of, and it definitely did some better than others. Games like Angry Birds Rio and Angry Birds Star Wars were just a fresh coat of paint for the original game, but was some branding thrown in there, and Angry Birds Space was Angry Birds in Space. Angry Birds Epic, oh wait, it's just Epic and the rest of these games are all the same thing apparently, is an RPG, but was always too challenging and grindy for my taste. Just like 
every RPG ever. But I always did think visually it was pretty cool, even if the idea of an Angry Birds RPG is like the weirdest thing ever. Angry Birds Go was a kart racer, which was honestly pretty impressive for a free app, both graphically and gameplay wise. I mean, your kart even gradually shows damage when you hit something, which with controls like these is gonna happen a lot. However, the difficulty spike was pretty ridiculous, which I'm beginning to realize is a trend amongst these spin-off games. Probably because they just wanted you to spend more money. Damn it, they got me! The best of the bunch was Angry Birds Transformers, which was an on the rail shooter with a ton of characters that you could unlock as you progress throughout the map. There was clearly a lot of effort put into this one and it's actually pretty fun. But much like the other spin-offs, Angry Birds Transformers also had that frustrating difficulty spike once you made it past the general tutorial. Since this one also had a recharge period where you had to wait for characters to heal, which is a system I absolutely hate in phone games. Like, do you want me to play or not? Unless you paid money on bird robots. You know? My mum may have had a point when she didn't give me any money to spend. I can't really imagine the Transformers and Angry Birds fan bases overlap all that much, but there's an admirable amount of easter eggs put in there for both series. And also a comic run. And an animated intro. And you know what? Angry Birds Transformers is way too good to be from Angry Birds. Oh, and there was also Bad Piggies. <coughs> Next game. Talking Angela. This one's a long story. The app is more or less just another one of those pretty vapid talking animal apps that I talked about in the last video. But what makes this one so interesting is less the game in its current state and more so the controversy it caused at the time of its release. See, the major gimmick of Talking Angela was being able to engage in conversations with her with a built-in Cleverbot-esque text generator. It was very, very limited, but hey, it made my kid self feel like he could actually talk to girls for a little bit. Of course though, dumb parents being dumb parents could not comprehend this advanced magical technology. And so instantly assumed that, and I'm not kidding when I say this, that it was a predator watching you through Angela's eyes and talking to their children through the app. Ugh. And dude, if that's the case, then he has to get some new conversation topics. I feel like someone was behind the eyes watching you at all times, even if you're off the app and your phone and your phone's off. So the company behind the app had to make some changes to it after it came under fire from news channels who didn't have anything else to talk about that week. For one, she wears clothes now. Good thing she covered up all that disgusting nakedness that was offending my pure eyes. Although Tom is totally fine just letting everything swing out, I guess. And of course, you can't message her anymore. So they basically neutered the hell out of this app. No pun intended. Or would it be spayed the hell out of it? Ah, but that just sounds gross. All you can really do now is feed her things, which is, wow, so entertaining. I mean, you can always talk to her and have it repeated. My name is Jeff. Isn't that great? What the fuck did you just fucking say about me, you little bitch? I'll have you know I graduated top of my class. What the fuck did you just fucking say about me, you little bitch? I'll have you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy series, and I have 21 confirmed kills. Wait, I want to try something. So yeah, the Talking Angela app was stripped of anything that made it unique, all due to a hoax and mass hysteria. Well done, parents! You did it! You saved the children! There, are you happy now? Vector is an app that a lot of people called me out for missing last time, and that's because I honestly just totally forgot about it. Yes, I forgot about it in the video where I was meant to be covering mobile apps that people forgot. I know. In this game, you play as a silhouette running away from an evil silhouette as you attempt to free yourself from your dystopian workplace. All of which is told to you through the game's surprisingly awesome opening cutscene. What? A mobile game with actual story? What, what the hell? You make your escape using your most effective weapon. Parkour! Because if you don't, you get electrocuted and die horribly. The gameplay involves you swiping in different directions to react to oncoming obstacles. By jumping, sliding, climbing up, and screwing up doing the special trick because you were dumb and forgot to read the tutorial. The full version of the game is paid, but for real authenticity, I grabbed the light version. Since, of course, that was all my young self was allowed to play. And man, did I play the hell out of those five levels! Gotta say, Vector is pretty cool for a phone game, especially one of its age, and it's one of the rare few that actually still holds up. And it's got a sweet soundtrack to boot. Still can't afford the full version though. Oh god, here we go. Face Goo is less a game and more one of those photo modification apps that were super popular until Snapchat came around and replaced them all. Now, I don't know if it's my sense of humor that's completely screwed up, but this is just absolutely hysterical to me. You can use photos from your camera roll to screw up, such as this wonderful piece of art I made, or you could use the camera on your phone. Huh, that's actually an improvement. You were also able to use some of the fantastic samples provided, such as Icy Goo, Goofy Goo, Teacher Goo, Slick Goo, Student Goo, Goo, ah, woe goo, and grumpy goo. <laughs> Alrighty then. To be honest, now though, it's about as fun as playing around with the warp tool in Photoshop. 
Aha! I love this one. An app that I'm sure anyone who has ever owned a smartphone and browsed the App Store at some point is very much aware of is Badland. A very unique and visually gorgeous game where you play as a little ball of floof and your task is to not get horribly killed. Ah! Much like Vector, Badland makes use of a very effective silhouette art style, which is really what I think makes it stand out so much. You guide this little oh. guy through a perilous journey avoiding spikes, traps, and other obstacles that can all result in your untimely smushing. <laughs> to play, all you need to do is press the screen to fly upward and release to fall down. The game auto-scrolls, so you have to keep up to make sure you protect this dumpling oh. at all costs. According to Wikipedia, these guys are called clones, and you can make clones of the clones, which you have to sacrifice so that the others can live. You only lose if all of them die, but it would never not break my heart having to leave some of these guys behind. They did nothing wrong. I never got that far into the game, but I always found playing it quite pleasant. So long as I didn't accidentally murder all the clones and then feel guilty about it for the next two weeks. Apparently it gets a lot more varied as you go on, which is definitely making me regret not dedicating more time to this one. I mean, hell, I played Paper Toss for longer. That's just sad. Oh, God damn it. Neon Cat Lost in Space is one of the dumbest things I have ever wasted time on. But I bet some of you did too. It's not just me, right? In this game, you play as Neon Cat and you get lost in space. Why, why do I even bother writing scripts anymore? It's a pretty straightforward platformer where your goal is to last as long as you can whilst collecting the colorful sweets and coins that come your way. Yay! There's a whole bunch of power-ups that spice up the gameplay a bit, all of which are named with a god-awful neon-related pun, such as the Kalai Neon Scope. Okay, Rocket Nyan. <laughs> Look how confused he looks. Super Nyan! Kian Nyan, no. God, saying some of these out loud really makes you realize, huh? Adren Nyan Lin. Oh god, dude, are you okay? And fireworks. Yeah, they didn't even try with that one. You can also make him poop out blood. Um, dude, uh, are you alright? The game has changed quite a bit from when I first played it, with the most obvious thing being microtransactions that are pushed like everywhere. I mean, unless it's always been like that, and I was just a lot more oblivious back then and more focused on the pretty colors, but I doubt I would have spent as much time playing this one as I did if it was this relentless trying to get me to spend money. Hell, it's even got that stupid save yourself option after you die. And there's also a city builder mode now? What? A lot of the other items and characters in the game just look so out of place with Neon Cat. Like, look at this dog and this cow. It just seems like a missed opportunity to design other characters in the same style as the cat, but they're just like... There. To make up for that though, there are a lot of skin packs you can buy using the coins you acquire. Such as the movie skin pack, with such iconic characters as the Nyanlian, Indian Nyan Jones, Iron Nyan, Spider Nyan, Pred Nyan Tor, and Gamer Nyan. Oh god! Oh god! Also, as you play, you get amazing quotes from Nyan Cat, such as OMG LOL. We we sure this one was updated a month ago or not like 10 years ago? It's not that it's necessarily bad or anything. I'm just really struggling to work out why I played this one for so long as a kid. Definitely wasn't joking yarn, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Talking Tom and Ben News, the only news source I trust these days. Tonight on Tom and Ben News, a horrific volcanic eruption has killed thousands of people in- Kim Kardashian dyed her hair. What? Anyway, the remaining survivors offer a plea for support. The American president made a funny tweet! I feel it's also worth mentioning they put ads for their own games at the bottom of the screen. Like, for real. Fortunately, it lets you put your own videos there as well, which is definitely something I did not abuse at all. Nope. On the bright side though, you can kill them. <laughs> Or make them kill each other. <laughs> Quick, next game please, I don't want to go to prison. Your mum gay. Yep, here's the crowd-pleasing one. One of the games that people mention the most in the comments of old mobile apps 1 was Where's My Water, a game published by Disney, where your goal is to give this crocodile some water. I can't tell you I really had any personal experience with this one, because it's a puzzle game and I cannot play puzzle games. All you have to do in this one is guide this water through some dirt and get it to this crocodile so the poor guy can have a shower. Although I'm pretty sure by the time you're done that'd be like the most disgusting water. Yeah, who needs a plumber when you can just erase all the dirt? I'm sorry to say I really don't have all that much to say about this one. It is a game and people wanted me to talk about it. So there we go. And I think that about covers it, but before we finish up, it's time for the bonus round. A lot of my favorite games that I wanted to talk about in this video are of course the ones you can't play anymore because Apple keeps pretending that older apps can't work on their super high-tech phones anymore. <laughs> Apple, please, I'm begging you, let me play Mino Monsters. I need it. Why is it always the best ones? God damn it. 
So here is our in memoriam section, where I pay tribute to the deceased and forgotten. Bill Killam, a fun as hell endless runner where you fight off an alien invasion. Age of Zombies. Apparently they made more games with Barry from Jetpack Joyride and I didn't play it, why? Ragdoll Blaster 2. I was a very screwed up kid. Jelly Car. It's... It's- it's Jelly Car. Grabatron. A game where you played as a UFO and ruined the days of some innocent townspeople. And it was great. There was also this really weird Power Rangers Samurai Infinity Blade ripoff where you fought the bad guy from the first episode and then fight him as a Megazord and it was actually kinda good- Wait, no, I'm not done- Mino Monsters 2. Because I can't even play the second game for fuck's sake, Apple, how can you do this to me? And of course, let us never forget the app Send Me to Heaven, which encouraged people to throw their phone in the air as high as they could to get a high score. Yes. That was a real game, and yes, what you're probably imagining is what actually ended up happening. See, this one I understand why they took it off the App Store. <laughs> well, that about covers it for Mobile Games Volume 2. Thank you all so much for the unbelievable support on the first video, and I hope this video was just as enjoyable for you as well. Angela, would you care to do the honors this time? Make sure to check out my Twitter, send anything to my PO box, and when your package opened in the video, and of course, check out our second channel, Bunk Smashers, where we play games very badly. <laughs> and with that said, I think we'll move this to the table. Oh, hello, welcome to PO Box. We gotta be quick because this video is already long enough. The first one is already open for some reason, that was easy. Two Diamond Bolt. Hey, that's me. I am Elon. I am 10 and I live in the US, so the Splatoon 25 final Splatfest will probably be underway by the time this reaches you, lol. Oh yeah. <laughs> I find your videos hilarious and awesome. Even though I don't really like Sonic, your videos about his games are extremely funny. And I agree that Sonic.exe is stupid. Can't wait for Paramount's live action film about that. Sonic.exe the movie, 50, 50 cents clearance. Well, your videos are amazing and keep up the good work. It's mind blowing that in a month or two you'll be reading this in a video. Ah! Aw, oh, thank you, man. Next, big boy. Yeet! My name is Ayan and I'm 11 years old. I love your videos, they are awesome. The first time I saw your channel was when I was looking for Transformers content and found your Cherish Forever. I actually started disliking Watch Mojo after watching your video. I, I didn't mean to send hate to Watch Mojo, I just disagree with them. Keep it up, congrats on the play button. Please answer these questions. Sure, good sir. Who are your favorite Transformers besides Will Jack and Sam Wow, That guy. Which death in the Bayformers do you think is the saddest? The series is quality. And he sent me a drawing of Laserbeak. That's awesome. Oh, and a logo. Thank you for that. But, but, this one is from Queensland. Yay! Dear Diamond Bob. It's Jackson, the guy who drew you your ruby weapons. So for this fan mail, which would take 600 years, I decided to draw a reference sheet of what you would look like as a kaiju from the MonsterVerse. And here are some questions. What do you think about the MonsterVerse so far? I liked Godzilla 1, Kong I really liked, King of the Monsters, I... Ghidorah was cool. Have you seen Kong Skull Island? Yes, it was my favorite so far. What do you think about the song Godzilla from Godzilla King of Monsters? Personally, I think it was good. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to listen to it. Who is your favorite monster in Godzilla King of the Monsters, except Godzilla? Uh, Mothra, she's, she's waifu material. What do you think about the idea of King Ghidorah being able to speak telepathically? I like the idea that one of the heads is like really dumb though. If you answered all my questions, thanks. And to all of the talented Godzilla artists out there, yes, you can do my designs from Jackson. Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I'm blue, I like that. Oh, he's got he's got weaknesses, abilities, crystal formation. I won't read all of this out, but if you want to read it yourself, uh, you can pause it. Status, alive. Oh, good, good, we cleared that one up. <laughs> well, thank you everyone so much for the letters from Jackson, Elon, and Aeon. Thank you guys so much for the letters, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. I guess it's probably time to get into the Christmas spirit, isn't it? Won't need this anymore.